Welcome to a WalterFootball.com Fantasy Football Mock Draft. This is a PPR Fantasy Football Mock Draft. Um, joined once again by Jacob Kamaker. Uh, Jacob, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm uh, I'm ready to get my mock draft on. I've been watching golf all morning and doing pretty much nothing, so I've had a lot of time to think about uh, how I'm going to attack this draft. Nice. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm drafting 12th and you're drafting 5th. Uh, looks like we're going to have uh, the same strategy. Uh, I guess I, maybe I shouldn't have spoiled that. Uh, you're going to have the same strategy as last week where you're going to focus on drafting receivers later, right? Yeah, I am going to focus on that. No spoilers this time because uh, it's just I liked how the strategy panned out. So I figured why not give it a shot from a spot that isn't the 12 spot, see if it works earlier in the draft or if it becomes more of an issue. Because my one concern is if a lot of the running backs I like are off the board by my third round pick and there are top receivers on the board, I may not be able to pass them up. But I at least want to see what that looks like. So even if there are better receivers than backs at that point, I may still take a running back just to test it out and see how it goes. Yeah, it makes it makes sense to be flexible. Uh, I'm drafting 12th um, in this PPR draft. Uh, I, I feel like I've been drafted late in PPR, so I want to see how it goes. Uh, and I'm not anticipating a running back uh, being available, a good one being available in the third round. Um and we're about to get started. I should say, uh, please hit subscribe if you're watching on YouTube or send this out to someone who likes football. Um, that would mean a lot to us. Hit the like button, notification bell. Uh, but subscribing would be the best thing. So, um, yeah, we're underway. Uh, looks like Saquon Barkley's the first pick, Christian McCaffrey second. Uh, I should say, uh, I didn't mention the date. This is July 9th for those watching later. Um, but, yeah, you're going to be on the you're on the clock now there. There you go. Yeah, no surprise. The top four backs are off the board. So the, the fifth pick kind of is a bummer a little bit for me in PPR. So I kind of I have a tough decision to make, but I'm going to go with Josh Jacobs here because um, I want a good running back. Obviously, I want someone with pass catching potential. I'm worried about Dalvin Cook staying healthy. I'm worried about Derrick Henry staying healthy after touching the ball 400 times last year um, and having a deep playoff run. So I was between Miles Sanders and Josh Jacobs. Both are kind of unproven at this point, um, at least in terms of longevity. But I think Jacobs has a, a better offensive line because of uh, the Brandon Brooks injury in uh, Philadelphia. And uh, I think he should handle the full workload. Doug Peterson can get into a little bit of uh, shenanigans with his running back. So I'm happy with Josh Jacobs. Um, I think that's probably the route I would go if I got the fifth pick and those four running backs went off the board. I like the Jacobs pick. Uh, it sounds like the Raiders are going to try to involve uh, Jacobs more in the passing game. Like he's he's not going to be a fifty catch uh, per guy year or, any, or anything. Like he's going to get like thirty five receptions or so, which is like pretty good for PBR, especially with uh, him running behind a great offensive line. Um, and uh, I, I feel like the Raiders as a whole will be better. Uh, Henry Ruggs will take guys out of the box. So um, I, I'm I'm pretty high on Jacobs this year. I, I think I would have made the same pick as well. Uh, Michael Thomas was a, a probably a close second um but yeah i don't think you can go wrong and i should say that i've been i've been trying to, to draft fifth or sixth um because i know the top four guys will usually go off the board this way but it always ends up happening where someone unexpected goes second or third and then i always end up with kamara or elliot <laughs> so i i guess it, it worked out for you sort of this way yeah at least they get to test the strategy and you know it is interesting to weigh the different running back options there because i'm like a big nick chubb fan most of the time but because of the presence of Kareem Hunt, I didn't want to take him at number five. But Chubb might be like my number one target of, in the later first round if I'm drafting there. But uh, it's such a weird year for running backs because even some of the the top guys overall have other guys that could steal touches from them. And I feel like Chubb's a great example of that. He's super, super talented. And he came off the board eighth in this mock, which I think is about right. But if Kareem Hunt explodes onto the scene and becomes like a big time pass catcher for the team, Chubb just isn't going to get catches, which makes him risky for PPR. Yeah. Um, where do you think Chubb would be drafted if, if Kareem Hunt wasn't there? Probably like fourth, right? I would say fourth or fifth. Uh, that would be his, his floor would be the fifth pick, I would think. Yeah, I, I would think so. Um, all right. Uh, so I'm on the clock. And so I, I've been higher on this guy uh, as this offseason has progressed. Uh, Le'Veon Bell. Um, I, I think the Jets have uh, – their offensive line is going to be better. And um, Sam Darnold's not going to have mono again. Well, hopefully not. And then uh, I, th I think uh, Le'Veon Bell has been working out very hard this offseason. So I, I think he's going to have a big year. Um, so I'm pretty high on Bell. Uh, Austin Eckler is the other guy I'm going to draft. Um, this is PPR, of course. So in standard, I would not draft him here. 
but in PPR, I think Austin Eckler is a, is a great option because he's going to catch so many passes. Yeah, I like that turn. I am a little surprised that you have Le'Veon Bell going so early solely because I thought he would be on the board for my number two pick, but I do like it. Like Bell was a no-brainer first-round pick last year, um, and things have only changed for the better after a poor year for him. So uh, I think getting him is great, and Eckler obviously has upside, and he's going to split out to the slot a lot, even if um, Justin Jackson takes carries away from him. Yeah, the other guy I was considering was Devin Singletary. Um and, uh, you know, if one of those guys – oh, there there he goes. Uh, if one of those guys was gone, uh, I was going to draft him. Um, would you have taken uh, Singletary over one of the guys that drafted? I would have thought about it. I probably – I might take him over Le'Veon Bell um, just because I like Buffalo's offensive line a little bit better than that of the Jets. Um, I think the Bills, Bills line is underrated, and I think they're going to be more of a ground-dominant team than the Jets. Uh, but, you know, I could be wrong. I also just trust their coaching more. Adam Adam Gase is very, very hard for me to trust. Yeah, I don't blame you. He's he's terrible. Uh, but I, I think the one thing going for Bell, uh, or he has a couple things, but like one main thing, or you're on the clock, I'll explain right after. Okay, so I'm kind of bummed out because Singletary, Drake, and Aaron Jones are all off the board now. Um, so the running backs, it, it's not my favorite crop at this point, but I'm, I'm going to go with Melvin Gordon. Um I don't love this because I think Philip Lindsay is going to play a role in that def- or that offense, but I think Gordon will still be the primary back, and he should catch a lot of passes. So in PPR, I'm okay with him. Um, I, I, I don't love him, but at this point in the second round, I think he's probably the best running back I could have gotten. Yeah, he's right up there with another guy, uh, Leonard Fournette. You know, it's, it would have been one of the two for me, um, and I, I think Fournette, there's a good chance that he's going to be traded. So – uh, if he's traded to a team with a with a good offensive line, I think that really would bode well for him. Um, but yeah, I, I think Melvin Gordon's a great pick too. Like they're 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 they were pretty much neck and neck uh, for me when you were on the clock. Uh, what I was saying about Bell is that uh, with Robbie Anderson gone, um, you know that takes away a receiver. And I know they brought in Brashad Perryman. They still have uh, they still have a couple other guys, James Crowder, um, but it, they they really don't have that many receiving options. So I, th- I think Bell might be involved more in the passing game because uh, Robbie Anderson's not there anymore. It's not going to be like a huge impact, but I, I think it's going to add just a few more receptions, which helps in PBR. Yeah, I think that's definitely a good point. And uh, we saw last year, Bell caught some passes, but when he wasn't healthy and when Sam Darnold wasn't healthy, teams can just clue in on him as a pass catcher close to the line of scrimmage. So it made his life a lot more difficult. I think if Darnold stays healthy the whole year, um, Bell is going to be open more often than he was uh, in 2019. So I think that's an impact as well. Yeah, that, definitely. Um, what What are your impressions of the first two rounds? Um, you know, I, I think Dalvin, Dalvin Cook went too early. We, we kind of say that every week, though. Um, and uh, Derrick Henry and PPR at 10, I, I see that in standard, but PPR is, seems a little too early for me. And then um, I think Clyde Edwards Hilaire, like I, I see his upside, but I'm, I'm just concerned about him not getting the job. Oh, you're on the clock. So I, I guess your thoughts right after this. I was going to scoop Patrick Mahomes there. Um, yeah. So good pick. Uh, I'm so not prepared for him to <laughs> not be on the board. Um, I could go with the running back here, but I hate most of them. Oh God. I, I don't like <laughs> this at all. Um, Oh man, and P- it's PPR, so I'm gonna go with Kareem Hunt way earlier than I want to. I don't. Um, I think that's a great pick. Yeah, I I don't love the value because you know Nick Chubb is there and he should hypothetically get more touches in the red zone. But I think in PPR, Kareem Hunt was the third down back most of last year. To my frustration as a Nick Chubb owner last year, so um, I think getting Hunt um, in the third round as my third running back is solid. I, I don't love it. Um, but I, I think he should do well in PPR. So I'm, uh, I'm comfortable with him there. I, I, I think I just don't like the fifth draft spot cause I'm kind of lukewarm on my running backs. They have upside, but uh, they all have concerns for me, which I wish they didn't. Yeah, I, I hear you, but I mean, he was the top player available for me. I, I was hoping he would last until uh, my pick in the third round. Um, you know, if, Nick Chubb goes down, which like, you know, you never know. But if he does go down, Kareem Hunt, um, and I asked I asked a question about Nick Chubb. What if Nick Chubb weren't on the roster? Like, where would Kareem Hunt be drafted in, in PPR, especially in PPR? Like, he would be fourth or fifth, right? 
So. Yeah, he, he would definitely be the fifth pick because if you think about it, when he was in Kansas City, he was what like a top ten pick for sure. Yeah. Um, at least um, at least his last season there. So yeah, I think he would be trusted as the lead back definitely. Uh, one interesting thing about this mock. We finally saw a mock go by where Mike Evans was taken yeah. in front of Chris Godwin, and I think that was the correct decision um, by uh, APF team or AP5 team. I can't read it exactly, but uh, I think grabbing Evans in that late second round was smart. So uh, having Barkley, Evans, and Chris Carson, pretty solid haul for a uh, uh, first three rounds of a PPR mock. I noticed that as well. Um, I was pretty surprised by it because we've seen Chris Godwin go first every time. Um, but yeah, I guess it's kind of refreshing to see that. And I think that's the correct order. You know, I, I like Godwin just fine. Um, I, I think he's a, he's a great receiver, but Mike Evans is, is so much better. I think, uh, Kenny Galladay just went off the board. He was someone I was looking at. Uh, so I, I think with this pick, I have to take at least one receiver. Um, so that for me, that would be, uh, Cortland Sutton. I I've been all over this guy, um, all off season. So let me, uh, Try to find him. There he is. Uh, Cortland Sutton, uh, he was great down the stretch uh, with Drew Locke. They they, uh, they got in sync pretty quickly, which is nice to see. Um, and now that Drew Locke has more experience, um, I, I assume the Sutton is just going to have an even better year. Um, the other the other pick, um, you know, David Johnson is the top player available on my uh, cheat sheet. Um, and I, I guess I have to, I'm have going to stay true to it. Uh, you know, I, I hate this because I know he's going to get injured. Um, but he can, when he's healthy, he's going to be able to produce pretty well for me. Um, I, and I, th- I think in PPR, if this were standard, maybe I wouldn't take him here, but PPR is like, that's his bread and butter. Like he's going to catch a ton of passes. Uh, so I like not crazy about this pick kind of like, I sound like you were with uh, cream hunt, like not, I'm not very excited, but, um, it just got to stay true to my draft for it. And Johnson, despite his, uh, his downside, he has a ton of upside too. Yeah, and I think where you're drafting me as a, uh, your third running back, you should be in okay shape. Um, if he gets hurt, you'll ideally have someone on the bench who can replace him for a few games, whether that's a receiver or another running back. So um, I actually liked the decision to take him there. Um, I think he has a lot of upside in PPR too. Um, I, I used to love David Johnson. I would take him every single year in the first round. I took him over Ezekiel Elliott once, which was a terrible decision, but I won my <laughs> league anyway. Um, so... You know, he he can, he can be one of those top tier guys. It's just a matter of will he ever stay healthy again? And I have my doubts, but in the early fourth round, there weren't many running backs better than him. Yeah, there, there's, there wasn't much there uh, at running back. So I, I like your decision uh, to go to Kareem Hunt because you really don't have to worry about running backs at all, or, or at least, well, you have to worry about depth later. But uh, in terms of having guys who can start right away, you, you're you're pretty set. Yeah, that that makes me feel pretty comfortable. Like I think Josh Jacobs is pretty safe, and like Gordon and Hunt have their warts, but I, I should be good. I, I think again, we've talked about this before, but you have to go two or three running backs with your first three picks. It just, um, and I'll be interested to see what Team Six, John Tron Thirty One, uh, what their running back room looks like because they just spent their first pick on a running back in the fourth round. And it's Mark Ingram. Their receiving core looks pretty good, but. Uh, uh, I'm curious to see how they'll look beyond Mark Ingram and I'm on the board and I'm going to take another running back because the quarterbacks are off the board and I'm still trying not to take um, <laughs> receivers at this point. Um, so I'm going to go with Darius Geist. Um, I I like his upside a lot. He can't stay healthy, but of the running backs still left on the board, he's about the only one that I would trust as like a, a guy who I could rely on as a starter. He's wicked explosive and he has, a, he has just a ton of athletic ability. So um, I like what he can do. It's just a matter of, can he stay on the field? But in the fourth round, I'm willing to take that shot. It's the first time I ever heard you say wicked, uh, which is cool because you're from the Boston area. Uh, so <laughs> it's very, very nice uh, to, to hear that. Um, I, and yeah, I, I, I could definitely see that if uh, David Johnson weren't available, I, I definitely would have considered Darius guys. Um, he is the upside for sure. Uh, the downside, I, I guess he has the same downside as David Johnson. Like neither can stay healthy. And that, that's why those guys are starting running backs who are going in round four. This is kind of a bleak year, very bleak year for running backs. Um, and I, I, I definitely uh, am interested to see how uh, John Tron 31's team pans out as well. Um, as, as you mentioned, he went, he went no running backs in the first three rounds. And that's something I definitely wouldn't recommend. Like maybe, you know, this is a mock draft. So like I could see him trying out the strategy to see how it goes. And I, I would definitely recommend that if, if you're doing a lot of mock drafts, 
try drafting no running backs in the third round and see how your team looks. I, I, it's probably going to be pretty bad, but at least you can find out. Yeah, and I did that with my um, – I drafted two chiefs at the beginning of the draft and it, it went horribly. Um, and I <laughs> stayed away from that at the end. It was Mahomes and Hill for those watching. Um, so I, I've been avoiding that and going heavy running backs early now, but I'm going to abandon the no receiver strategy at this point because there are no quarterbacks. I like, <laughs> there are no tight ends. I like, um, but there are receivers. I like, um, and in PPR, I, I think that this guy is going to be a monster. Um, AJ Brown from Tennessee, um, uh, he was the top player on, left on my board. He was amazing as a rookie. I mean, he really burst onto the scene late in the year. He was Ryan Tannehill's favorite target. Um, I think he's only going to get better. He can play inside, outside. Um, I think he's going to be a reception magnet, really. So um, I, I love him as my my top receiver, and I'm I'm thrilled that he was on the board in the fifth round because I was really keeping an eye on him and Robert Woods. Um, and Woods came off the board, so I was hoping that Team Four wouldn't scoop Brown from me. But uh, now I got Brown, and I think uh, I think I'm in good shape at receiver already. Yeah, um, I, well, that's interesting. John Tron uh, went double tight end. I that's I I don't like that at all. Like if you're if you're going to uh, like experiment, not drafting running backs in the first round, that like that's good. Uh, but there's no reason you should draft uh, double tight end. I, I think that's there's there's no reason to do that. Um, I, I think that um, AJ Brown I, and I typed this up recently on the site. Um, I've been watching the 2019 season over again, and he's really impressed me. Like I remember him being great as a rookie, uh, like no doubt. But uh, watching the season a second time, actually the third time, because I watch every game twice. Um, watching the season a third time, he really stood out to me. Like he he was just a monster, and I, I think that he could be he could have a great year. Um, I. Kenny, Kenny kind of uh, laughed at me for this. Uh, I, I called him like uh, I, I said that he reminded me of Julio Jones a little bit, and um, Kenny disagreed, which is just fine. Uh, but I, I think he has like just unbelievable upside. I was really hoping he would drop to me in the fifth round. Yeah, no, um, that that definitely makes sense to me. Um, I think he's he's definitely flying under the radar because some people are more focused on the other receivers like DK Metcalf, Darius Slayton. They all, they all also went in this round. I think the second year receivers are just bound to have a good year. But you're on the clock now, so uh, if you want to explain your next two picks, yeah, Devontae Parker. Um, we'll see what happens with him. But now that Adam Gase is no longer in Miami, uh, it should bode well for him. Uh, I saw that he blocked uh, Armando Salguero today, the uh, the the Dolphins uh, beat writer, who's uh, one of the best uh, uh, football writers uh, in in the country, or I guess in the world, because football. Um, he's um, it was funny. I don't know why he blocked him, but uh, I think Parker is going to have uh, another big year. He just has so much talent, and I think Adam Gase just couldn't figure him out. But I, I think that he's going to rebound. Uh, continue to rebound, and um, I like him as my second receiver. Uh, Raheem Mostert, who has requested a trade, so we don't know where he's, where he's going to go. I would think that him going somewhere else is going to be great for him because uh, he's going to have more opportunities than he does in San Francisco because the 49ers rotate so many running backs. Uh, if he's traded to a team that needs a running back, uh, like well, I, maybe not the Chargers because I drafted Eckler, but like a, a team like the Chargers that doesn't have a running back, maybe like Jacksonville if they trade Leonard Fournette. Um, if he's going to get the majority of the carries, I think that could bode well for him. Yeah. What about uh, what about the Steelers? What if they're like so fed up with James Conner that they turn to the 49ers and say like, hey, we'll give you James Conner if you give us Raheem Mostert or some deal in that sort of way. Like, I'd love his fit in Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah, it would be great. And, and Pittsburgh has a great offensive line. So that would, that would go very well for him. And I, I think that Mostert has a great upside for that reason. Um, there's another, another running back. I like Alexander Madison. Um, I guess I, I should move him up my rankings because he was, he was next. Uh, actually there's another one for PPR. Um, yeah, I, I like Madison a lot, especially with Dalvin cook, uh, potentially holding out for a while. Yeah. This is one of the mocks where I forget how much I love Alexander Madison because I'm so just focused on other running backs, but He's the type of guy that if I do the zero wide receiver strategy, I may just overdraft Madison in the fourth or the fifth round because uh, the fact of the matter is Dalvin Cook doesn't stay healthy um, and he's possibly holding out. Madison looked excellent as a rookie, so I think uh, I think he has a, a ton of upside. So I, I love him. He just came off the board to Team Nine in the sixth round. I think that's a great opportunity. Um, the seventh team, she hate me. Uh, 
uh, first of all, great name. It's a great name. <laughs> and second of all, um, I have to feel that they're probably a little bit bummed out that they missed out on Madison because having him to handcuff Cook is just like it's a surefire way to have a running back one for most of the year, you know, barring some double injury disaster. Yeah, and uh, John Tron took a quarterback, so no second running back. All right, you're on the clock. Okay, I'm again going receiver, so I'm I've officially abandoned the strategy, but. Uh, <laughs> I'm going second. This is my new strategy. If I'm picking in the middle, I'll go all running backs first four rounds and then take second year receivers because Terry McLaurin's still on the board. Uh, he had almost a thousand receiving yards last year with Case Keenum, who constantly overthrew him, and Dwayne Haskins, who was so not ready to start that the team just didn't want to play him, but they threw him into the lineup out of desperation. Um, I think he's going to be much better off. He was college teammates with Haskins, he was a rookie last year. And he put up massive numbers. So uh, having him as my second receiver, I think, has a ton of upside. And uh, there's not a lot of guys who can take away targets from him in that receiving core. I know, uh, you know, Steven Sims is solid in the slot, and I like his upside. But uh, McLaurin in the sixth round is a no-brainer to me. Yeah, it was a great pick. It was uh, one of the top players available for me. And um, I, I definitely would have drafted him on the way back. Uh, probably should have considered him, um, you know, in, in my spot. But I, you know, I, I think with four running backs, and that's something you have too. I, I think four running backs in the first six rounds is pretty, pretty cool uh, this year. Uh, you're on the clock again. Okay, Tyler Lock just got snagged, so that's a, a little bit of a bummer for me because I was hoping to get him. So, all right, this is PPR. I got to remember that. Um, okay, I'm going another second year receiver. This is Debo Samuel time again. He may be, he may miss the first six weeks of the season. He may be totally fine. Um, I hope they don't rush him back, but I'm drafting him solely based on upside here. If he was fully healthy, he probably would go in the same range as AJ Brown, if not earlier. He's the top receiver in that San Francisco offense and was great as a rookie. So um, I like him there as my third receiver. I won't have to play him until he is healthy. So I think that's a uh, it's a pretty good value, and the, the way my team's shaking out right now, I, I really like it. We are young, but we have just a ton of explosive ability. Yeah, I like your team a lot. I, Samuel is someone who really intrigues me, um, and you're right. I mean, he would go a lot earlier than this if he didn't have that injury, and it sounds like that injury is not going to not going to cause him to miss too many games, uh, which is great news. Uh, so it wouldn't even surprise me if he plays week one, like he may not be a hundred percent, but, uh, he could definitely take the field by then. It's a, it's kind of a late start for week one too. I think it's like the, the 11th or 13th or something like that. It's like, it's like pretty far down, uh, cause Labor Day is a little bit later this year. Um, so that, that should definitely help him. So I, I, I like that pick a lot. He was someone I was going to consider as well, um, at the turn here, uh, coming up in a couple of picks. Um, I, I I'm not a fan of, we, we've, we've had. In the in round six and seven, we've had four quarterbacks uh, chosen. I, I can't say I'm a fan of that, especially in PPR. Now, if this were standard, I could understand it a little bit more. I uh, still wouldn't like it that much, but PPR. I mean, quarterbacks matter so much less than running backs and receivers. Uh, so you know, especially someone like Dak Prescott, I, I just feel like you can get someone like that in round nine. Yeah, the Dak Prescott going ahead of Russell Wilson, Kyler Murray, and Deshaun Watson again just makes me want to like punch a wall like it just it pisses me off so much but uh you're on the clock so we can talk about that after <laughs> talk about the wall punching later yeah um so i have four running backs already uh, i don't see the need to go quarterback yet uh like not even close uh will fuller so i have a, a texan running back so it's not ideal that i'm going to draft a, a texan receiver but david johnson is my third running back will fuller is my third receiver um i, I just think that will fuller is uh, has so much upside uh, especially with Hopkins gone. Now he's the number one receiver. Uh, he tends to get injured a lot, so that's a concern. Um, so maybe I, I have a pretty risky team here, but um, I, I think that I, I just I just love his upside so much. Um, and like I said, like he's my third receiver, so he doesn't really have to start. Uh, CD Lamb is my next pick. Uh, I've, I've been drafting him uh, pretty frequently in these mock drafts. Um, he's the best – well, he and Jerry Judy were just awesome. I, I feel like they're both going to have great years, uh, but Lamb is in a more uh, of a passing attack offense, even though Elliott's there. Like Dak Prescott uh, threw for a bunch of yards last year, and I, I just think that with Amari Cooper fading down the stretch, uh, as we've seen a lot, uh, I think Lamb could just have a big rookie year. Yeah, no, I definitely like both those picks. I love the Fuller pick because, you know, if he was healthy all the time, I feel like he'd be a – 
a, a guy would go in the top 60 picks every year, but he's just never healthy. So he always falls because people know he's going to get hurt. But as your third receiver, he has upside and lamb's a great guy to have as a backup. Cause you know, even if lamb starts the year slowly, he's eventually going to work into the rotation more there and get some targets because Prescott likes to spread the ball around. And um, it's basically Cooper Gallup, uh, Lamb and Blake Jarwin are the top four weapons on that offense, and they don't have a ton, a ton of depth. So um, I, I like that pick. Um, my favorite rookie receiver just came off the board, though, Jerry Judy. So uh, props to uh, Gav, Team 8, for uh, grabbing him. Gav has a pretty good team overall. Um, uh, did a good job of balancing receivers and running backs and not reaching for any other positions. So a uh, hat tip to him. Yeah, I love I love his team. Um, team 8, if, you're, if you can't see the name. Uh, yeah, it's uh, – I think it's great, very well balanced. He didn't take a quarterback or tight end, which I'm a fan of, and I, I like a lot of his picks. Uh, you're on the clock. Okay, so I don't have anyone here that I that I really love. No, wait, no, I do, I do. I'm going <laughs> another young receiver. It's the other Dallas receiver, Michael Gallup. Um, so people like overlook this a lot. Gallup had over a thousand receiving yards last year. Um, and I feel like I heard absolutely nothing about that. And I know he's more of a deep threat, so his PPR appeal is a little more limited than that of Cooper and uh, maybe Lamb as a rookie. But um, as my fourth receiver, having him available to fill in while Debo's hurt or um, if anything else comes up, I, I'm I'm cool with that because the Cowboys offense is going to have to score a lot of points to uh, stay competitive. So I feel like Prescott will spread it around. So I'm uh, I'm happy getting him at this juncture. Yeah, it's a, it's a good pick. Um, he was someone I was way higher on before the Lamb uh, draft selection, um, and it's kind of, it's kind of a shame because I I thought that like like you, um, no one was paying attention to Gallup at all, and he made such a big leap in his second year. Uh, it's kind of a shame for him that he's not gonna, he's now going to have fewer targets. But you know, like we saw last year, Amari Cooper tends to fade. Like we, he always does that. Uh, so maybe down the stretch, Gallup is the two and Lamb is the one, or or vice versa, I guess. Um, so yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, and, and the Cowboys, they, they weren't really like going into the draft, uh, you know, thinking about a receiver, they, they loved lamb. Uh, but they, they, they thought they were going to draft, uh, Caleb on Jason. They didn't think that, um, that lamb would be on the board. Um, and like we've, we've had, uh, we've had good success, uh, calling the Cowboys picks. Um, and they were definitely going to take chase on, uh, but lamb was very unexpected. They did not expect him to draft to, to drop to them. So they kind of took advantage. It's a good pick. Um, so definitely can't blame him for that. Uh, you're on the clock. Yeah. So I was hoping Philip Lindsay would make it back to me. I didn't, I thought he would have more chance to get back to me than Michael Gallup. So a little bummed out that I couldn't handcuff Melvin Gordon with him, but I'm going to handcuff Darius Geis instead uh, with Antonio Gibson. Gibson was a third round pick. Ron Rivera's compared him a little bit to Christian McCaffrey. Um, not much, but he's said like a McCaffrey type role. So, um, and Scott Turner's offenses have had running backs lead the league in catches, I think at least two of the past uh, three years. So someone's going to do it in uh, Washington. If it's not Geis, my money would be on Gibson. It's probably a little early for him, but I'll spend uh, spend on that to get the handcuff and to get a PPR threat. So uh, yeah, I'm okay with that at that point. Yeah, Gibson. I, I just, I just kind of discovered that I don't have Gibson in my uh, cheat sheet, uh, and that was because when he was drafted, I didn't know whether to designate him as a running back or a receiver. Uh, so I, I just, I, I kind of in the back of my mind, I, I thought like, okay, once I know for sure, I, I'm going to put him in because uh, on my spreadsheet, I have to put a position or else it'll break. Uh, so uh, I, I didn't have a, uh, I don't have him in my cheat sheet, but now that like it's kind of clear uh, that he's a running back now, um, and he obviously could eventually become receiver. But now now that he's going to be running back this year, um, he'll be in the cheat sheet uh, next week. Or I guess in, I guess in two weeks uh, because I'll be in Vegas next week. So uh, no, no fantasy mock draft next week, uh, but we'll be back in two weeks. I know you're going to be on vacation, so I'll have to, uh, to get like uh, Kenny or, or maybe Charlie Campbell to, to do a mock draft. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I'll, I'll watch from vacation, but I can't guarantee the Wi-Fi will hold up enough in uh, rural New Hampshire, which is where I'm going. So... <laughs> Yeah, I, I, the last time I went somewhere with dubious Wi-Fi was my honeymoon in Bermuda, and I well, I'll, I'll tell that story when uh, after I pick, make a pick. Um, so Josh Allen and Damian Harris just went. I, I think I like Harris later in the draft. I, I think it's a little uh, early for him right now. Um, so I'm, I'm still going to stick to the running backs and receivers. Uh, so where am I? Let's go to running backs. Uh, I like 
Naheem Hines this year in PPR. Uh, Frank Reich talked about how um, he thinks Hines could catch 10 passes in some games this year, uh, which kind of like really intrigued me. Uh, so we've seen Philip Rivers turn Austin Eckler into a receptions machine. So I think Hines could have like a similar impact, even though there, there are a lot of running backs there. So obviously he's not going to be like Eckler because of uh, Marlon Mack and Jonathan Taylor. Uh, but you know, he's, I still think he's, he can be a nice plug and play. Um, looks like Anthony Miller is on off the, off the board. No, no, he's not. I have to, uh, switch to running back the receiver. All right, there we go. Anthony Miller, um, down the stretch last year, he caught a ton of passes and it was, is Mitchell Trubisky kind of like started running sometimes, which I was kind of worried about with Miller. Uh, but Miller's receptions total went up a lot. And I, I read somewhere, I forget where. Uh, this offseason that Miller really improved his work ethic in the middle of the season last year, kind of like kind of figured it out as a pro. Um, and the receivers coach for the Bears talked about how Miller continued to work out uh, very well uh, this offseason. So that, that kind of made me pretty uh, bullish on on Miller. And I'm, I'm hoping that Nick Foles wins the job there. And I, I think he will. Uh, if he will, that, that that's going to bode well for Miller because uh, Foles is not going to run nearly as much as Trubisky can. Yeah, no, I think that uh, if Foles wins the job, I think Miller has a ton, ton of upside. I think if Trubisky wins it, I'm a little bit less bullish on Miller. But still, in the 10th round, I'd take a shot on him. He's talented. He's a former second-round pick. So, uh, yeah, I think I think your team's shaping up pretty well, especially for PPR. I love the Naeem Hines pick, too, because, you know, the Colts don't have a super-established receiving core, so he could even play a little bit in the slot if they wanted him to. And I always look at running backs who can do that as a big-time asset in PPR. Yeah, uh, looks like John Tron. So uh, we can circle back to John Tron's team here. Uh, his running backs are Mark Ingram, James White, Tariq Cohen. Um, can't say him. I, you know, I think his running backs are, are pretty pedestrian. I, I, I wouldn't like. I, I get that he's trying to strategy here, but I, I just I think that uh, it kind of proves that you have to go running back early. So you just you just took Aaron Rodgers. You want to explain? Yeah, he was available in the tenth round, and I've been trying to get him in the tenth round, like <laughs> each of our mock drafts. But he keeps getting scooped to pick before me, so. I'm uh I'm thrilled to get him. Um, uh, I love Aaron Rodgers this year. I think he's going to be playing angry because of the Jordan Love pick. And even though his supporting cast isn't great, um, I I think he he has as good a chance as anyone to be a top five fantasy quarterback if he can stay healthy. So uh, we'll see what happens. But tenth round, there's no risk with Rodgers. Yeah, definitely not. Um, you know, I, I I wouldn't go quarterback early, but tenth round is definitely fine uh, to take a quarterback. Um, especially in PBR, you don't want to go quarterback early, as we talked about. Uh, you're on the clock again. Oh, that was fast. Okay, I'm very unprepared for this one. Um, <laughs> let's see, what do I even need? I could I could use a tight end, but I could use another receiver. Let's do receiver. Um, I feel like I feel like I'm gonna go with Golden Tate because uh, I like the Giants a lot this year. Um, it's late in the draft, um, and I, but I think they're going to throw a lot. They don't have a great defense. They're kind of they're similar to the Cowboys in a way, which is why I don't get why more people aren't on to the fact that the Giants could win the East, um, in that they have a not great defense but a fantastic offense. So I think Golden Tate should get a bunch of catches um, for the Giants. Um, he showed a solid rapport with uh, Daniel Jones last year, so uh, I'm comfortable with him as my fifth receiver. Yeah, it's a, I, I think it's a good pick. I mean, he's he had some good performances, uh, definitely on the stretch. Uh, Cam Newton just went. Um, and we talked about how uh, Go, I don't know if that's Gov or Gav, um, uh, but I, I like to see him a lot. And to, to take a quarterback in the eleventh round, tenth, tenth, eleventh round range, I think is what you want to do. Um, and I, I definitely like the value with Cam Newton in the eleventh round. Yeah, I love that pick. I love his team in general. The only pick that I didn't love was I think he went Michael Pittman a little early. There were other receivers I would have taken, but overall that team looks rock solid to me. Yeah, absolutely. So I have five running backs, five receivers. I'm on the clock. Uh, do I take another running back or receiver? Um, maybe. Uh, so I, I I probably go. I probably want to go tight end. Um, I love Mike Gesicki this year. I talked about him in previous drafts. Um, Gasicki's going to play the slot in Chan Gailey's offense, which is going to mean that he's going to uh, catch a lot, lot of passes. So I, I, I'm definitely a fan of his, um, this year. Um, and I probably should delete that. All right. Um, my other pick, um, kind of, uh, might be running out of time here. Um, I, I, I had some guys who, uh, were off the, 
off the board on my on my cheat sheet. Um, looks like uh, I'm gonna go receiver, and I, I think I saw this guy earlier. Okay, Brashad Perriman. Um, kind of double stacking with the Jets, which may not be like the best idea, but um, Brashad Perriman is going to be the number one receiver with the Jets, uh, presumably. Um, and he was so good down the stretch last year. Like he was a first round pick and yeah, it, it looked like he finally figured it out. Um, so I, I think that's a good sign for him. Uh, so I, I think that could potentially mean that he carries it over into 2020. Yeah, I could see him finding success with the Jets. I think he's worth a flyer at this point um, either way. Um, I love the Mike Kosicki pick. Um, I've been playing a lot of Madden lately, which is not a good reason to get into fantasy uh, <laughs> players, but uh, you should see him in the Jacob Kaminker Miami Dolphins offense led by Andrew Luck with Antonio Brown. He's insane. He just does so much good. So Really? Yeah. Uh, but anyway – Either way, I think he's in for a big year. He was always a great receiver. The questions were about his blocking. He wasn't well-rounded. But in Chan Gailey's offense, if he's playing the slot, like, look out. I think he could be the big breakout tight end that everyone wants Hayden Hurst to be this year. Yeah, that's true. And, and you're on the clock now. Oh, okay. Um, so I also need a tight end, but I also could do something else. <laughs> but I'm unprepared to do anything but take a tight end, I think. So let's see. Yeah, I'm going to do what I do and just take tight end late and go with Austin Hooper again. Solid pick. I mean, uh, you know, I, I don't think he's going to have the same production um, that he had in Atlanta because a lot of that came in garbage time. Uh, but, I mean, he's he's going to be one of Baker Mayfield's primary weapons. And uh, Mayfield it's kind of like, you know, hurting for weapons if Jarvis Landry is not 100%, which doesn't sound like he is. Uh, so I, I think that – I think that Hooper could have a solid year. Um, it's like a lot of guys are are, are auto drafting at this point because like three guys just got taken in a row uh, with Preston Williams, Ruggs, and Deshaun Jackson, um, and then like this is um, this is the anti penultimate round. That's uh, third to last. Uh, those of you who don't like fancy words, um, uh, Sterling Shepard was another guy I considered uh, when I when I was on the clock. Uh, so that's I think that's a good pick. And you're up again. Yeah, I would have considered Sterling Shepard. I did actually consider him over Golden Tate, uh, but I ultimately went in a, the Golden Tate direction. Now, uh, at this point, there are not a lot of players on the board that I really care about. Um, so I am going to ha I'm going to take a player that I never thought I would take in a fantasy mock draft, but uh, <laughs> Jarek McKinnon. Uh, he's been injured for two full years, but if Raheem Mostert does get traded he will man the backfield in San Francisco along with Tevin Coleman. So, you know, at this point in the draft, there's some upside with him. And even though I constantly think his name is like jerk big chicken or something, like <laughs> I'll give him a shot. Like as my sixth running back, if he doesn't pan out, I can always scoop up whoever else might be the handcuff in San Francisco, whether that's uh Jeff Wilson jr. Or a yet to emerge player. Pretty sure there's a jerk McChicken kicker. I can probably take in the 15th <laughs> round. Um, I, I I think McKinnon definitely has upside here uh, for sure. Um, you know, I, I I read a report yesterday saying that he hasn't begun cutting yet, but that doesn't mean that he can't begin cutting in a month or so. So um, if, if that does happen, um, I, I think, you know, you could end up having a great steal here in the 13th round. Um, I, I definitely think the, the 49er running backs are worth exploring, and I, I'm not really sure where to, to rank them yet because we don't know if Raheem Moser is going to be traded or not. Uh, but if he is, I mean, I think you have to heavily pursue these these uh, 49 running backs. And um, speaking of 49er running backs, um, I think this guy should be available. Uh, he's not. Uh, was he drafted earlier? Uh, Jeff Wilson Jr.? Um, I don't uh, see him being drafted, but I don't No, I don't. Oh, here he is. Jeffrey Wilson. I don't know why I couldn't see that. Yeah. Jeff Wilson Jr. Um, he looked good in some opportunities last year. Um, and I, I think that if, if most are traded and McKinnon is not healthy, uh, Jeff Wilson Jr. is going to get a healthy number of carries. Now, maybe the 49ers trade for a running back. That could definitely happen. Uh, but I, I think there is um, definitely some potential with him. So kind of like Mira is your pick. Like, I, I feel like one of us is going to have a, a great pick in the 13th round. Um, I'm going to take my starting quarterback in the 14th round. Um, and what I like to do, I, I mentioned this all the time. Uh, I like to rotate quarterbacks throughout the year. I, I won a fantasy championship last year playing Eli Manning in two playoff games and then Daniel Jones in the championship because um, I, I drafted Cam Newton late and then he got injured. Um, uh, 
So uh, I kind of had to rotate the entire year. And it was like the most fun I've ever had playing fantasy. It's like rotate, rotating quarterbacks. Um, I've done that before, um, but it was really, it was, it was like so, so fun to like figure out which quarterback to pick up each week. And uh, it's something I'm going to explore a lot, especially with how, how thin the running backs are this year. Um, I, I feel like you really need to load up a running back. You have to make sure you take three early and then you have to have good depth in the middle rounds. Uh, so I'm going to uh, try to take a, a quarterback late once again. Yeah, a part of me is actually like very angry that you picked Jeff Wilson Jr. Like, I don't think this would happen in a real draft if I took one of the 49ers depth guys, but I was like, oh yeah, I'll take McKinnon now and then Wilson won't get drafted and then I can always <laughs> pick him up. But if that happened in, in like a real draft, I would probably be like, I can't believe that happened. So uh, yeah, well, well done on that pick. I think that one has a ton of upside. And anytime you're late in the draft and you need a running back, my advice is just take someone on the 49ers because Shanahan mixes them up enough that, you know, one guy goes down and you may have a guy who's going to get 10 or 15 touches in a game. Yeah, can you imagine if Moser gets traded and then Tevin Coleman gets injured? Like one of us is going to have a an RB2 at the very least because uh, the 49ers block well. So, you know, one of those guys is going to do great, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, any any picks that stand out to you late here in the draft? Uh, like for me, I, I think uh, Alan Lazard. Um, I think he has a ton of potential as the Packers' second receiver. Like the Packers didn't address the receiving core at all. Like maybe they're just super high on Lazard. Yeah, I like the Lazard pick a lot. I like getting Adrian Peterson in the 13th round. I considered drafting him, but I didn't want to have three Redskins running backs on my team because um, that would feel like overkill. Um but I think he's a pretty safe bet to get some carries. Uh, I'm also a fan of Duke Johnson in PPR um, being picked at this point because, like we said, David Johnson doesn't stay healthy, and Duke Johnson is a good receiver anyway. So I feel like he's a he's a solid pickup. So uh, props to Team Ten, which is C, for uh, getting that done. Also, I'm not drafting a defense. If I was going to, it would be the Indianapolis Colts uh, because they're playing the Jaguars uh, Week One. Just draft them. It's not that hard. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to take Daniel Jones because I don't know why he was still on the board. Uh, I wouldn't take two running backs in an actual draft unless there was an insane value like Jones on the board late. So um, that's why I'm going with him. Uh, uh, speaking of the Colts uh, defense, I think they're a great defense to have, not just for week one, but the entire year. Uh, they played the Jaguars twice, uh, including week one. Uh, they played the Texans twice, uh, and Houston's offensive line is so bad. And they played the Titans twice, and the Titans don't have, um, you know, they have Ryan Tannehill. It's not like they have a great offense or anything. Um, so I, I think I think they could have a great defense this year with DeForest Buckner uh, in the interior. If Xavier Rhodes uh, bounces back, uh, to 2018 uh, and and prior form, uh, I feel like the Colts could have one of the better defenses in the NFL, and you know, obviously that would translate to fantasy. So, um, I, I would definitely recommend there. I, I probably, you know, I, I feel like I, I would be tempted to take them in the 14th round, uh, but then I had to take my starting quarterback. Yeah, no, I, I definitely would consider them. I mean, 14th round they were available; they're still available, so I'm just going to take them now, but. I think it just makes a lot of sense. Like you said, their schedule's not that hard, and they start the season pretty well. Um, again, the, there may be holes in the secondary that can be exploited if Xavier Rhodes doesn't pan out, but if they're a good enough team, uh, one, they'll still generate sacks and pressure and turnovers, and two, they may trade for an upgrade. So I'm uh, I'm very happy landing them, and every single mock we've done that I've drafted to defense, I've gotten them, so people don't seem to be on to the whole the Colts defense is going to be good. <laughs> Uh, bandwagon enough at least yeah I think people are behind on that I, I don't understand why they don't see that like maybe maybe as the summer progresses and like if if uh if like a major publication uh points out that the Colts have a much better defense this year uh, I, that could definitely change uh but right now the Colts are very undervalued but not just here but overall um I think when we went over our Super Bowl um uh, 55 picks uh, a couple of days ago I went to Colts like 24, 25 to one or something like that uh, to win the Super Bowl. And I thought that was a just great value. Yeah, they were. They were, I think, 24 to one. So the, people just haven't caught on to the fact that they're one of the top three teams in the AFC and that they could overtake the Ravens, not e not necessarily easily, but they match up well against them. Um, I think a lot of people just aren't sold on Phillip Rivers, but uh, I think they should be. Yeah. And I mean, even if. Like Rivers doesn't really have much to do with the defense, you know. So uh, 
but so if we're just talking about fantasy, um, it makes a lot of sense. Um, but you know, overall, I feel, I feel like even if Rivers, like Rivers can't be that much worse than Jacoby Brissett was last year. I, in fact, I think he'll be better, um, especially with Brissett being injured late in the year. Um, so I, I think that the Colts are a great, great play at 24 to one. Um, looks like I'm going to take, uh, Elliot Fry. Um, I didn't see jerk McChicken here as a kicker. Uh, but Elliot Fry sounds pretty good to me. Uh, so that's, that's it for our draft. Uh, do you want to go over your team? Yeah, this is once again, I like taking a lot of running backs early and I'm confident in my core there. Josh Jacobs, Melvin Gordon, Kareem Hunt, Darius Geis. Three of those guys should be solid starters, even if, Hunter and Geis have some uh, questions. That's fine. Gibson's a solid handcuff in the ninth round. And McKinnon, as we talked about, is a good upside pick. Um, my receivers are very young, and they have a lot of upside. But then I also have Golden Tate there as a insurance uh, or security blanket in case one of them struggles or Debo Samuel can't come back for his injury as quick as I'm anticipating. And getting Rodgers and Daniel Jones in the 10th and 15, 14th rounds is insane to me because – I think both of them are potential QB ones this year. Uh, so I'm, I'm very confident with my team. Um, I got Austin Hooper at tight end again. That seems to be my go-to in the 12th round. So I, I think this is a very competitive team overall. And uh, while I didn't stick to my avoid receivers strategy, um, I don't <laughs> think it works quite as well as it did um, picking in the 12th round. Um, I, I would still go with the four running backs in the first five rounds if possible. Yeah, I love your team. Uh, you're you're great at the top at running back. Uh, you know, even like Josh Jacobs. Like ideally, you would want one of the top four guys, uh, especially in PPR. But I think Jacobs is gonna have a great year, and uh, I I love your other running backs, especially if guys stays healthy. Like you're gonna have so many good running backs that you can even trade one uh, for for something else if you know maybe for receivers get injured. Um, but your receivers are great too. Like AJ Brown, I think he's gonna have a great year. McLaurin, uh, also you know Debo Samuel it doesn't sound like his injury is that bad, and then Gallup, uh, he has great potential as well. Uh, and then to get Aaron Rodgers in the tenth round, Hooper in the twelfth round, like you have you have a great team overall. So I think this could definitely win a championship. Uh, my team is, um, you know, I kind of went the same strategy as you went running backs early, then receivers in the mid rounds. Um, Le'Veon Bell, Austin Eckler, like, you know, I'm drafting 12th, so I'm not going to get a blue chip player or anything, but Le'Veon Bell used to be a blue chip fantasy player and maybe he can get back there. Like he's been training hard this, this off season. So I think he's definitely going to have a rebound and then Eckler and PPR is just awesome. Um, and David Johnson, like who knows if he can stay healthy, Raheem Mostert, Mostert don't know where he's going to go, but I feel like at least one of those guys would do well. Uh, my receiving core, you know, I, I, I wish I would have gotten like AJ Brown and DK Metcalf, but it's kind of like a, a symptom of where I was drafting. Uh, so I, I uh, you know, Cortland Sutton, Devontae Parker, Will Fuller, CD Lamb, I feel like that's a good receiving core. It's not, not like great, but I think it's pretty solid. And then, um, you know, Mike Kosicki, I'm on him at tight end. And then uh, Jared Goff talked about him before. He's going to be my starting quarterback week one against Dallas, maybe week two against the Eagles. And then I'm probably going to dump him for someone else. So that, don't read too much into Jared Goff being my starting quarterback. I think I'll be fine at quarterback. So, um, yeah, that that's that's it for my team. Uh, we, had a, we had one question uh, I wanted to answer. Um, what's your take on Eckler with Tyrod Taylor as the starting quarterback? Yeah, I think that's a fair question because Taylor's had some accuracy issues in the past, but I think that would benefit Eckler and PPR because Taylor may be more apt to just throw a, a few dump offs and uh, Eckler is going to be the safety valve on most of those plays and he can do a lot after the catch. So I don't think Taylor's presence hurts Eckler that much. Maybe he won't get as many uh, yards after the catch as he's used to with Rivers um, in the fold, but um, I, I don't think Taylor has a massive impact on him. And even if Taylor struggled badly, they would just throw Justin Herbert into the mix. And we've seen guys produce in fantasy with uh, worse quarterbacks in the fold. Like last year, again, I mentioned this earlier, but Dwayne Haskins struggled immensely as a rookie, but Terry McLaurin was still productive. So you may get frustrated at times, but I feel like for the most part, Eckler should be okay. Yeah, and I, I feel like Herbert's going to start like sooner rather than later. I I, I would be shocked if if Herbert uh, comes in at, like week thirteen or something. Like I feel like he might even win the starting job right away. Um, but if not, I think week four, week five, maybe week six 
is when we see Herbert. So I, I don't think it's a big factor. I think you, you I think you want Herbert because Tyrod Taylor is going to run more than Herbert. Like Herbert's mobile, but but Taylor relies on his legs more than than Herbert. Uh, so every you know, as I say often, like you know, every time a, a quarterback scrambles, that's one opportunity taken away from a receiver. Uh, so. I, ideally, you want Herbert, and I, I think you will get Herbert. And I, I'm fine with Eckler either way, though. Like, I mean, he's going to catch a ton of passes uh, in that offense, especially with like no other running backs there. Like with Melvin Gordon gone, uh, maybe they trade for someone. Uh, but right now, Eckler is just in a great position, in, especially in PPR. Um, all right, any any teams you want to go over that are interesting? Like we pointed out, uh, Gov or Gava. Like I said, I can't see that name, um, but I, I love Gov's team. Uh, or Gav's team, and I, I think it's just just great overall. And I, I love the strategy of no quarterbacks, no tight ends uh, early. Um, I, I just think he's stacked at running back and receiver, which is where you want to be. Um, I think Team Eleven uh, did a good job that way. You know, Miles Sanders, Aaron Jones, Jonathan Taylor. I think that's a great uh, one, two, three punch at running back. And then Galladay, Keenan Allen, Stephon Diggs, Cooks. I, I'm not a big fan of Cooks. Uh, but I, I, you know, it's, otherwise I think his receivers are good. And then he drafted quarterbacks and tight ends late, which is something you want to do. So uh, those are the two that stand out. I'm going to look at the other teams uh, while you talk, though. Yeah, no, I agree. Those two teams stand out as being good to me. And the thing I like about Team Eleven, Blash's team, um, it's Br- Brandon Cooks pick. Like I don't love Brandon Cooks, but he picked him as his fourth receiver. So that's right. like you know. I'm fine with that. And he has Alan Lazard, Larry Fitzgerald, and Jalen Rager also there in case Cooks gets hurt. So I'm actually okay. That's one of the few times I'm okay with Brandon Cooks being the pick. Um, in terms of other teams that I like, I, I tend to like the team that picks first overall. And this is a no, no change to that. Um, I think team one getting Saquon Barkley, Mike Evans, Chris Carson, Calvin Ridley, and DeAndre Swift early is great. Um, I don't. I like Russell Wilson and Tyler Higby. I think they went a little bit earlier than I would have taken them, but uh, I still think he did a good job building uh, depth late. Uh, Marvin Jones, Latavius Murray, Deshaun Jackson, Anthony McFarland. Like this team has a ton of upside, and it has two very safe contributors in Barkley, who could be the top running back in fantasy, and Mike Evans, who could be the top receiver in fantasy. So I think that's just a high floor team overall. Um, I think we talked about John Tron's team a little bit um, and how that strategy didn't pan out um, in terms of running backs. And I, I think that's a good point. Um, another team that had a uh, interesting running back strategy was team seven. She, uh, she hate me again, great name, but they took Dalvin cook and then didn't take another running back until uh, the seventh, sixth and seventh rounds going Damian Williams, and Jordan Howard, uh, so they really don't have any established running backs besides Cook um, in terms of guys that could really be counted on as a starter. And they have great receivers in Lamar Jackson, but I think that team could run into some problems. If, if Cook goes down, that team is in big trouble at running back. Yeah, I think so. Um, just goes to show that you need running backs. And, he, you know, if, if Cook holds out, he doesn't have um, he doesn't have a clear cut starting running back like Damian Williams might lose his job. Uh, Jordan Howard may lose his shot to Brita. Uh, Justin Jackson may may not get any carries at all. Uh, if you know if Kelly stands out, or if they trade for a running back, um, you know there there are no guarantees there. It just looks like a, like a potential disaster. I, I feel like he should have gone running back in the fourth round rather than Lamar Jackson to kind of like shore up his running back core. And don't don't draft Alvin Cook in the first round. Um, at least you know if he ends his holdout, sure. But he's holding out. Like you don't know how long that's going to last. Uh, like look at Melvin Gordon last year. He missed several games. And if you drafted him early, like you were burned. So I, I wouldn't draft Alvin Cook. And like he he's never even played a full season. So I, I've kind of like I was already bearish on him. And like now it's worse. Um, team four is a, another team I wanted to talk about. Um, you know, like he started well with Alvin Kamara and Patrick Mo- and uh, DeAndre Hopkins, Patrick Mahomes, but kind of like fell apart after that. Um, if you look at his running backs after Kamara, he has Cam Akers, who may not win the starting job. Marlon Mack could lose the starting job. Carrion Johnson might be irrelevant. Uh, Zach Moss might be irrelevant. Um, and then it, it's at the, his, his second receiver, Cooper Cup, and his second running back, Cam Akers, are from the same team. Um, I, I think that's something you want to avoid. Now, I, I know I drafted uh, David Johnson, Will Fuller, but they were my third and third running back and third receiver. I think that's okay. But your second running back and second receiver should probably – be in other teams unless you're like getting great value or, or something. Um, and I don't, I really don't see those guys as great values. Um, you know, like, like I said, acres may not win the starting job and Cooper cup is, uh, you know, he, 
when Jared Goff started playing right away, Cooper Cup, he really leaned a lot on Cooper Cup, but it looks like he's preferred Robert Robert Woods as his top receiver now. Um, so I, I I don't like his team overall. You know, like Patrick Mahomes is great, and I, but I think that you know drafting a quarterback in the third round of PPR could could really hurt your your other positions, and it looks like that's what happened. And 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 also he only has three receivers. Oh yeah, that's actually weird. I did not notice the whole three receivers aspect of it. I I like um I like Cooper Cup a little more than you, but Robert Woods was still on the board, and I would have taken him over that. Um, I I think the running backs like one of them should pan out hypothetically between Acres, Mac Johnson, and Moss, but it, they are all risky, like you said, and you don't want to have a ton of risk at running back. So I I think this is the classic example of a team that early in the season could be really strong. But if that second running back never really emerges, then it's going to be really hard for them to sustain a high level of play as injuries might strike, especially at receiver. If you get like if Tyler Lockett gets banged up and misses a game, you have no one behind him. So that's a kind of kind of an issue. So um, I, I don't mind the strategy in the first three rounds, but I agree with you. I should he should have taken a running back instead of Cooper Cup. Um, uh, DeAndre Swift was still on the board at that time, so I probably would have gone that route. Um, that would be my choice. Yeah, I would think so. And if he takes a running back there, uh, that pushes Cup. Um, so maybe he gets Cup in the fifth round. If not, then he gets one of Robert Woods, AJ Green, or or Calvin Ridley, which you know still sounds good to me. Um, so yeah, I, I I don't I don't know. I'm not not a big fan there. Um, otherwise, I, I think everyone else did like like fairly well or or better. Um, you know, we we talked about some of the teams that we didn't like. Like uh, you know, she hate me. I I agree with that. Um, and then uh, you know some of the other teams uh, didn't do as well, but like, but I think overall, like uh, I, I like this draft. Uh, some some pretty sharp picks. Um, like last week was insane. I, I feel like last last week was the best group I've ever drafted with. It was, it was crazy. Uh, this this group did well too, uh, but there were there was a couple dubious teams. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think overall it's pretty strong. You can tell which which teams are probably experimenting with different strategies too. So uh, that makes it helpful to you know associate. Um, those teams experimenting and say, okay, this probably wouldn't happen in a real draft, but this person just tested something out. But yeah, last two weeks we've had a really sharp draft group. So uh, props, props to the guys who've come out and uh, participated for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I guess that's about it. Uh, do you have anything to add or anything to plug? Uh, I don't have anything to add, but you can follow me on Twitter at Jacob Kamaker. I tweet golf picks weekly. Now we're on week one of me tweeting them weekly and actually remembering to do it. Um, and I also got a bunch of uh, football content coming out about the Redskins, uh, thoughts on the Patriots. Uh, so you can follow me on Twitter at Jacob Kamaker. I'll uh, have all my thoughts there uh, throughout the coming weeks in the lead up to training camp. Sounds good. Justin Rose needs to do better. Um, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, so yeah, uh, please hit subscribe. Uh, once again, that would mean a lot or hit the like button, uh, notification bell, like all that would be, would be great. I'm at waltzerfootball.com. Tons of fantasy content is coming. Uh, we have our season previews. We have our quarterback rankings, ranking all the starting quarterbacks for 132. Um, and then everything else, like uh, Charlie Campbell's posting draft prospect rankings for 2022. He already did 2021. Now he's doing 2022. So, uh, you know, if you're if you're looking uh, like down the road at the draft, uh, you know, you can see uh, which which prospects are coming out soon uh, in a couple of years. So, uh, yeah, that, that's about it. We're not, as I said before, we're not going to have a fantasy uh, mock draft next week because I'll be in Vegas. Uh, but we will be back in two weeks and, um, you know, and, and you're going to be vacation. So I guess I'll talk to you in three weeks. All right. Sounds good. Have fun in Vegas. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Have fun, have fun on vacation too. Uh, talk to you later. All right. Thanks. Bye.